Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth lecture of the series on linear quadratic regulator. In this lecture, we discuss the numerical implementation and simulation of continuous LQR. Here is the overview. We start with the algorithm of continuous LQR, then we move on to the simulation and some examples. Let's start by recording the algorithm for continuous LQR from the lecture number 2. We denote the simulation step size or the sampling period as delta t, which is equal to tf by n, where tf is the terminal time or time horizon for the continuous time simulation and n is the time horizon in discrete time. So here we divide tf into n discrete instant, which we denote by tk, and the time period between each instant will be delta t. Then in the LQR algorithm, we start with the terminal recording matrix P of Tn, which is set as the terminal waiting matrix Q of. Then we go backwards in time, and during each time instant, we compute the recording matrix using the discretized version of the RDE, in which we compute the recording matrix at the time Tk minus 1 using the recording matrix at the next instant, which is P of Tk. Now using the recording matrix at Tk minus 1, we compute the feedback gain at Tk minus 1. This we repeat for k equal to n to 1, which gives the feedback gains for each time instant, and this we can store in a matrix. Now, in the forward simulation of the system, we compute the control input at each time instant using the feedback gain at that instant. We start with the initial state vector x of t0, and using which we compute the initial control input u of t0. Now, using x of t0 and u of t0, we compute the state vector at the next instant, which is x of t1. Then using x of t1, we compute u of t1, and then this will be repeated till the end of the time horizon. Note that here we have used the time discretized version of the state equation for updating the state vector. Here x of tk plus 1, which is x of tk plus delta t, is equal to x of tk plus x dot into delta t. So here this time in this red bracket is x dot as per the state equation. And this is basically the first order Taylor approximation. We can also obtain the next state by integrating the continuous time state equation from tk to tk plus delta t using some numerical integration tools such as OD45. Now, if you repeat this simulation for k equals 0 till the end of the time horizon, we can compute the control input and the state vector at each time instead. Next, we move on to the simulation of continuous LQR in which we consider an LTA system with system matrix and input matrix as given in equation number 1. The simulation parameters are chosen as in equation number 2, in which we select the simulation step size as 0 0.1. Now, for the LTA system, the response with the continuous LQR for a time horizon Tf equal to 10 is given in figure 1, which shows the plots for the states, control input, elements of the feedback gain matrix, and diagonal elements of the recording matrix. Here we can see that the state starts from 10 and 5 and converges to 0. Similarly, the control input also converges to 0. When it comes to the feedback gains and recording matrix, we can observe that the transient period for the feedback gains and the recording matrix is at the end of the time horizon. Since in the feedback gain and recording matrix computation, we start with the terminal time, Tf equal to Tn, and go backwards in time. Therefore, at the end of the time horizon, we can see that the feedback gain and the recording matrix is time varying, but they eventually converge to some fixed values which we can observe from here. Here, during the transient period of the states, the optimal feedback gain is fixed. This is because of the reason that here the LTA system selected is controllable and the time horizon is sufficiently large so that the feedback gain can converge to some fixed matrices. Now, figure 2 shows the response of the LQR for a time horizon Tf equal to 2. Here, the time horizon is small, so the feedback gain and regarding matrices are not converging to some fixed matrices within the time horizon. Or we can say that the feedback gain and recording matrices are time varying over the entire time horizon. The MATLAB course for the simulations in this lecture can be downloaded from the link given in the description. From the simulation response, we can observe that if the time horizon is sufficiently large, the feedback gain and recording matrices for a controllable LTA system converges to some fixed matrices, say KS and PS. We also have for the time horizon TF equal to 10. The total cost j for the LQR with the optimal gain k of tk as here and for the LQR with the fixed gain ks which is a steady state gain as here. And here we can observe that we obtain the same value as the LQR with the time varying gain. 
similarly for the time horizon t of equal to 2 the cost for lqr with the optimal gain k of tk is as given here whereas for the lqr with the steady state gain ks cost will be this here the cost is increased as compared with the lqr with the optimal gain here the optimal gain was time varying for the entire time horizon as observed from the previous figure therefore if we replace it with the fixed gain the performance gets affected whereas in the case of tf equal to 10 during the transient period of the states the optimal feedback gain was constant therefore if we replace the optimal feedback gain with the steady state gain matrix the performance does not affect in general if the time horizon is sufficiently large and in the case of infinite horizon lqr we can use the steady state gain matrix ks in the lqr control law without affecting the performance now in the next lecture we discuss the derivation of discrete time lqr that completes this lecture thanks for listening